your strength yes. so it doesn't matter what you're coming with today leave it aside and remember that the joy of the Lord he is your strength Amen. hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, O ye lands, and serve the Lord with gladness. With gladness. Come and sing His praise. Let's make a joyful noise. 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 Make a joyful noise unto, unto the Lord, O ye lands, ye lands and serve the Lord. Let's make a joyful noise. Let's make a joyful noise. Enter his gates. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into his courts now with praise. God is his thanks to the Lord and bless his holy name. Enter his gates. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into his courts. Come into his courts. Always make a joyful noise unto the Lord. 
Alleluia. Song 
belongs to the Lord. One more time. Absalom John, joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflows. Joy overflows in my heart. I will sing a new sing a new song, song to the Lord. I will praise His name. I will praise Your name.
I will praise your name because God you are good you are good and your mercy endureth forever hallelujah 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 why don't you praise God with me this morning why don't you lift up his name this morning why don't you tell God how much you love him this morning how much you love him this morning thank you God for bringing me here God this morning thank you Lord God where I can come into the sanctuary and lift up your name this morning thank you Jesus thank you God you are good hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus thank you Jesus we thank you for your presence oh God we thank you for your presence oh God your presence oh God is heaven to me hallelujah and I will sing oh Lord I will give you the glory hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you God thank you Lord thank you Jesus hallelujah thank you God Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. When we're going through our times, you know, we have to rely on the presence of God to keep us close. We can't rely on our circumstances. They fail us. We can't, we can't rely on our work. They fail us. But we can rely on God. We can rely on God. We can embrace his presence. Hallelujah. We can embrace his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty in this world. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Cause Jesus, you're that cup that won't run dry. Who is like? Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love. Matchless love and beauty, endless worth. Nothing. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Let's sing it again. Who is like? Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Yes, matchless love. Matchless love and beauty, endless world. Nothing in this world, oh God. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence, your, your presence, presence, oh Lord, is heaven. Yes, it is to me. Oh, your presence, your presence, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, your presence. Yes, Lord. Your presence. Yes, it is. is oh, is heaven. To me. To me. To me. Oh, Lord. Your, your you Lord in my weakness you are oh, so merciful. merciful nothing in this world could ever satisfy remember of my past and present wrong that's right Jesus you're the cup Jesus you're the cup that won't run dry nothing in this world
to me, to me, oh, your presence. Your presence yes, it is. is heaven to me. Oh, your presence, God, your presence. Your presence, yes, it is. is the voices. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on, let all the bass and the tennis, altars, sopranos. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yes. Jesus. Wonderful. Come on, sing it again. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, Jesus. is heaven to me oh come on come on come on give him a shout out church 
Give him a shout out of praise this morning. Clap your hands, all your people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. What a savior. What a savior we have. What a savior we have. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. Will you put those hands together? And give him a clap offering this morning. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father, for Jesus. We bless you for Jesus. We bless you for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't go away, worship team. You stay right here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 103. Praise the Lord. My soul and all my innermost being praise his holy name. Amen. Do I hear an amen in the house? Should I read that again? Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my innermost being. Praise his holy name. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your disease who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things. Glory to God. Somebody should say amen. amen. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. May the Lord renew your youth this morning. Amen. In the name of, may you feel youthful in Jesus name this morning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor is anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. That's worth an amen right there. Amen. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Isn't that great? 
The more you try to go to the east, is the further it becomes from you. And so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are framed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it, it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. And his righteousness with his children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. What a wonderful psalm. We can continue to read. But we want to give thanks to God this morning for his amazing love. Amen. God loves you this morning. God loves you this morning. No matter how you feel, God loves you this morning. Amen. His love is everlasting. Come on, look at somebody and maybe give them a high five and tell them you are loved this morning by God. Amen. You are loved. You are loved. Hallelujah. That's a good thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me. Come on, receive it. Somebody needs to receive this love this morning. Little ones to him belong. Yes, yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, yes, Jesus, Jesus loves me. Love me this morning. Yes, Jesus loves me. of God, the love of God. Amen. Come on, give him thanks. Amen. Thank you for your love, your amazing love. Thank you for your love this morning. We thank you for these emblems that reminds us of your love. The extent of your love. The power of your love. Your love has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And as we come to remember this table, we proclaim and we declare the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension 
and soon return of Jesus Christ. We declare it this morning to principalities and powers and every authority and every darkness. We declare your victory at the cross, your resurrection, your ascension, and your soon return this morning. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Come on, church. Don't patty cake with your praise this morning. Hallelujah. We declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Let's come to the Lord's table this morning and continue to worship him. Be reminded of the love of God. Amen. Come on, worship team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. God is with us, church. Those watching online, God is with you. Amen. God is with you. Be encouraged. Amen. Grace, glory is grace. Grace, glorious grace, at the cross you called it finished. Grace, wonderful grace, grace, wonderful grace, at the cross all of my Come 
church. Come on, church. Are we blessed this morning? Are we blessed this morning? Are we blessed this morning? Hallelujah. No matter what. No matter where I've been. No matter how I fall. You pick me up again. You have removed my shame. You take me as I am. You call me justified. Now I am covered by. Hallelujah. Amen. We are covered this morning. Covered. Amen. Please be seated covered. in the house. We are so blessed. Amen. Amen. We haven't got time to really sort of open up and go into a deeper worship because we want to hear the word of the Lord this morning. But we are blessed this morning. Amen, Amen church. Amen. Come on, tell yourself, I am blessed. Every day of my life, I am blessed. Wonderful, wonderful. Welcome, welcome everyone this morning to the house of God. Amen, church. If you're here with us for the first time, I'm not sure. The light is in my eyes. If you're here for the first time, raise your hand up so we can see you. We want to welcome you especially. Any first time visitor, okay? So you're here at least for the second time. Well, put your hands together for everyone this morning in the house. And also, if you're here joining us online, we welcome you this morning. And if you're watching this service again, we also welcome you. Will you put your hands together for everyone joining us online today? Come on, church. You can do better than that, man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's a joy to have with us um, Carl George. It's a joy to have you, Carl. And to also have Judy and Corey. Corey. Amen. Come on, will you put your hands together and welcome them? Welcome them. Amen. Carl George is no stranger to Mount Zion. He's ministered um, over the years to us in so many ways. On the platform, supporting our church, our business. And he's just been a gracious man of God to have connected with us. And Carl, it's great to have you today. And we're looking forward to hearing what God is going to say through you. God bless you. Amen. God is good, church. In a moment, we're going to be waiting on you for your tithes and offerings. Can I please encourage you to give generously as the Lord has blessed you. Amen. In proportion to your income, the Bible says, give to the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, so you will see the account details come up on screen when we come to the offering. You can point your phone and go directly to our giving page, or you can just take the uh, account details down and give directly into our bank account. Unfortunately, we're having a bit of problem with the electronic machine, so it's been out of order since last week. But um, please give as the Lord has blessed you. In a moment, we're going to run the Mount Zion news, but I, I just want to give you a couple of heads up. Next week is going to be an amazing Sunday. We have a Connect Sunday. We call it the fest. We're going to have a feast. We're going to sit around tables. 
Amen? And we're going to... Oh, next, sorry, the 5th. The 5th. Next Sunday is the 28th. The 5th, I'm giving you some heads up. We want you to invite as many friends and families to that service. Amen? Because church, our, as far as I'm concerned, the only reason why the church is still on earth is to give as many people the opportunity to come to faith. Why would we want to be around here? Why would God want to keep us in this sin-sick world? It's so that we can expand the love of God, communicate the love of God. That's why we are here. And that's what a week on Sunday is all about. We're going to be trained to develop our confidence and our skill in sharing our faith in this generation. So about 20 of our brothers and sisters were trained by Christ for All Nations. And what an amazing time it was. But I'm asking the question, so where is the whole church? I'm asking the question this morning, where is the church? Hello. So I'm encouraging you to make sure you are here. If you're an online worshiper and you are in the vicinity of being able to come to the house of God on the 5th, make sure you are here, in person. Yes? Because the body of Christ needs to be trained so that we're all skilled. Come on. If Jesus went all the way to the cross, not my will, but your will be done and rose from the dead, do we believe that? What a message we have. And why would we want to keep it just among ourselves? It is our responsibility. Every single person, don't look at the pastor and think, that's your job. It's not my job. It's your job. Amen? We are just here to equip you and to make sure that you are skilled and confident in able to share your faith. And so, please, we're going to do that around table. We're going to have food, coffee. In fact, we want you to come at 10 o'clock. You're going to have some breakfast and then not... Um, not Akin saltfish and fried dumpling. English continental, they call it. And there'll be food and stuff, fruits, and then we're going to finish off with some smosa right at the end. So we really want you to take the opportunity to reach out to your friends and families and let's fill this place with as many people as possible as we bring the training to you. Amen? Come on and tell us a little bit about Pastor Ruth as she comes next weekend or this weekend. Good morning, Mount Zion. Great. We're going to have an absolutely amazing weekend this weekend coming. Half night of prayer. Say it to somebody else. Half night of prayer. We're going to have an amazing prayer time with Pastor Ruth. She's going to be coming and sharing about breaking strongholds and deliverance. And you need to be there. And if you know that, you, that somebody that you know needs to be there, bring them along. Amen. Amen? Amen. And then on Saturday, we have a women's brunch. Yay, ladies. <laughs> Amen. A well-being brunch. And we are looking forward to that time. We're going to have people talking about physical health, mental health. We're going to have people talking about, and Pastor Ruth is going to end the afternoon by talking about our spiritual health. You've got to be there. Invite your friends. Today, you can register downstairs, see Sister Pam, and even put a deposit down so we can cover catering and know exactly who's coming. And last of all, on Sunday morning, Pastor Pastor Ruth is going to be here in the house. Okay, so bring your friends, bring family, and we look forward to an absolutely amazing weekend in the presence of God. Amen. Isn't that good? So you have two amazing uh, Sundays coming up. Next weekend, it's a deliverance weekend, really. So if you know people who are hurting, suffering, needing breakthrough, 
you need to bring them with you um, right throughout the weekend so that they can receive prayer and ministry and healing in the name of Jesus. Okay, so those are the two big things that we wanted to emphasize outside of the norm. Can we then run the normal Mount Zion news? Thank you. Straight after which the worship team will come and lead us in prayer. Yes, you're going to come after. Yeah. Good morning and welcome to Mount Zion Community Church. We are a family of believers with the mission to connect, develop, empower and release people into all that God has called them to be. And we extend a warm Mount Zion welcome to all of our visitors. Here are the upcoming events and activities that you can partake in. You can join us every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. at 70 Thomas Street, Aston, Birmingham, B6, 4TN, for an awesome time of worship and the Word. After the service, you are welcome to join us downstairs for fellowship over light refreshments. Please note that our morning services are recorded and live streamed to YouTube at MZCC. Please be sure to like and subscribe. On Wednesday, the New Creations Ministry will meet at 7.30 p.m. You are free to attend if you are a new Christian or would like to know more about the Christian faith. On the last Friday of the month, join us for a time of prayer and encounter. Please note the time change, we will now be starting at 7.30 p.m. in the banqueting suite. This month we have Pastor Ruth Carabo joining us in our prayer meeting. The Women of Virtue present a Women's Wellbeing Brunch on Saturday the 27th of April at 11 a.m. Join us for a morning filled with delicious food, inspiring conversations and great company. This is the perfect opportunity to relax, unwind and connect with other amazing women in a welcoming atmosphere. Special guest speakers, Pastor Ruth Carabo and others will guide us through our theme of physical, emotional and spiritual well-being. Whether you're a seasoned brunch goer or trying it out for the first time, this event is sure to leave you feeling refreshed and uplifted. Don't miss out on this fantastic chance to treat yourself and make new friends. Register today for catering at a cost of £10. The address, MZCC 70 Thomas Street, b 6 n We can't wait to see you there. Then join us on Sunday morning where Pastor Ruth will be with us to minister. What you start, you always finish. For more information about any of the messages you have heard today, or for help and support, you can contact the church office via the numbers on the screen or our email address. Connect with us on Instagram or scan the first QR code below for our link tree, which displays all the platforms you can connect with us on. Also, be sure to visit our new website at www.mzcc.uk or scan the second QR code. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the service. Wonderful. Amen. Let's all stand together as we give to the Lord this morning. Thank you, worship team. Who believes that we serve an awesome God? If you believe we serve an awesome God, I want you to join in with us this morning. Those online, join with us as we declare who God is. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you're awesome. Lord, you are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. We worship you right now. Lord, you are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. If it was a 
We could continue, but we have so much to get. I mean, I'm just, I'm just bouncing. Leon on the bass this morning. I don't know what's happened to you, bro, but that's just going through my system, that one. Oh, my goodness. Everybody is doing well, but... <clears throat> Father, bless these givings. Bless every heart, every family, every soul. May they know the blessing of God upon their lives, upon their health, upon their household. Give them ideas and visions for the future. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please be seated. We're just running a bit behind. Don't go away, um, Sosa. Um, Evelyn, where is... Amen. Last year, Evelyn and Asosa did an amazing job in preparing us for our release conference. They're just going to talk to us for a few minutes. God bless you. Come on, church. Welcome them this morning. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Good, good morning, church. Um, I just want to start by asking us two simple questions. If you are here today and you know a young person between the age of Four and 20. Can I see your hand, please? In any capacity, teacher, parent, grandparent, community worker, youth worker, children worker, stranger, passerby, neighbor. <laughs> Let me see your hand. Okay. Some hands are up. Let me try this other question and see if there will be more hands. If you understand the mission of go ye into the world and preach the gospel, understanding that we have a call to impact lives around us to help families to support people that we see on the street in the school place in the shops anywhere that we have something that we can do to bring about a difference in this generation let me see your hand hallelujah now what we're about to say is for you release 2024 is for you. Hallelujah. 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 It is Hallelujah. time to soar. Tell your
your neighbor, it is time to soar. Amen. With the theme of the conference being Arise and Soar, we can't be left out, church. We can't be left out. Pastor has a vision to redefine our children and our youth ministry, to equip them with what they need, which is the supernatural power of God to thrive. You see the news. You see our streets. What is becoming of us? What is becoming of us? So this conference is a church conference, but we focus on the younger generation to see how we can save our world, church. And we are extending this invite. Not, we're not, the, 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 the conference is not just for us because we are inside here, but when we go out, there's a whole lot going on. Yes or no? Exactly. So this is why we are reaching out to churches, to communities, to families around the region to come, come and hark in to the word of the Lord. Come and be empowered. Come and be released. Come and be delivered. It's not a small call. It is a big call. And we all need to rise up to the message and soar. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. That deserve a hand clap. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time for us to arise and soar. That is the theme for the conference. And the date for the conference is from the 5th of July to the 7th of July. Which means nobody in this church is going on holiday. No holiday for us. Because you know why? Because we can't do the job on our own. We need you. We need her. We need everybody in this church to come together to help us organize this conference for our young people, for our children. You know, we say it's for the next generation. Look around you. Just take a look around you. We've got a youth in the house today. Take a look around. See how many youth do you see in the house this morning? Come on, take a look around. Just look around. For me, when I look around, my heart burns because it's for the next generation. We will be gone. That is the reality. I mean, that's, we will be gone, but who is taking over from us? Are we training them? Are we getting people into the house that we will be able to hand over? And as I can see in the church, we're not well prepared. So this conference is for us to empower young people, to empower our children, to empower the young generation, the next generation. The Bible says that God will pour out his spirit onto all flesh. It's not just for adults, it's for young people as well. And we need to get the young people here so the spirit of God can fall over them. We need young people who will be mountain movers, who will be generation shakers. We need the Pauls, the Peters, if we our young people. The Peters that who will walk outside and the sick will begin to heal. The dead will rise. People will be delivered. We need young people in our schools who will not, who will not be just be doing anyhow. Just follow the narrative. We are young. We can't do anything about this generation. We need young people who will be able to go to school and share with their friends that Jesus loves you. You know, Jesus can save you. We need young people like that. That is why this conference is for all of us to work hard together to make it happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a big call. But you know what? We can do it. Because the Bible says we can do all through Christ who strengthened us. This morning, I want you to begin to start to arise and begin to swell. Begin to believe that this call is possible. Begin to believe that Mount Zion can be full of young people. Can be overflowing with young people. who will come and the church is so excited. We don't have young people on their phone. You know, sometimes, you know, we are in church, and our young people, they are on their phone. Do you think it's their fault? Whose fault it is? 
It's us. It's because we haven't created that culture. We haven't created that culture of them coming to church. You're on your phone and the Holy Ghost is hitting you. That phone is flying somewhere. You not even think in my time. You can't even think of having a conversation with your friend in church. What? You can't. But now they are not just having a conversation with somebody with their phone in church. That needs to change. That is why we have in this conference. So how can you help? I've already told you. Go onto the byways. Go. You are an auntie. You are a grandma. You are a parent. You are a youth worker. You go and get everybody into the house. Bring everybody into the house. Because the power of God is going to fall in the house on that day. We're going to raise some radical young people who will be taking Birmingham for Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much for listening to us. We'll be downstairs after church registering. If you can help, come and register. If takes, we've got to save the dates. They are downstairs. We'll give you downstairs. Yeah, yeah we'll give you save the dates. Go out and invite everybody into the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just to add to that. Yes, please clap. <laughs> Just to add to that. The vision is going to be birthed and helped by none other by, but a powerful woman of God from America, orchestrated by the Holy Spirit has himself, and she'll be coming to impact on us. We have other ministers lined up. We have a minister from Ghana, Sylvester. We have Gastric Music Church, um, Gastric Church Music Team coming to bless us, and a whole lot more. More information will be shared in the coming weeks. God bless you. Wonderful. <clears throat> Aren't you blessed, church? <clears throat> Do you hear the passion? Yes. The passion? Yes. You don't catch that, you're dead. <laughs> you need resurrection. <laughs> Amen. Come on, put your hands together for Evelyn and for Asosa. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. They'll be saying a lot more as we lead up to the conference. Without further ado... Carl George, welcome to the platform this morning. Let's welcome Carl. Come on, put your hands together and welcome Carl. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Praise the Lord, church. We can say, in the same passion that I heard just now, we can say, praise ye the Lord. I bring you greetings from New Jay Community Church just down the road with my bishop, Pastor Melvin Brooks, is the presider there, and Pastor Yvonne Brooks. And they're very close to Pastor Calvin and Pauline in terms of our ministry. And as you mentioned, I've been with you many, many years, closely connected, closely connected to what we're doing in the kingdom. As I hear about what you're doing in a couple of weeks' time, this is big. This is, you should be here. Deliverance and breakthrough. This can transform lives. When I hear what you're thinking to do in July, already you're looking about soaring. This is big. This is what we need to do. And I understand the heart of a pastor. I understand what you need to do. And sometimes it's lonely. And my prayers are that you have the spirit of the Lord circle around you. And I come against every plan of the enemy that would distract you. I know what it's like sometimes. It's a selfless task. And I just thank you for the ministry. I thank you for this building. You see, when I was coming around the back today and coming up, I felt like I was coming home again the amount of times we've used this building. So thank you. I'm asking that today we're going to get some confirmation for some of you as some of the things that you've been praying about. I'm just praying right now, Heavenly Father, that we understand that where there is good stewardship, financial stewardship, we shall see revelation, illumination, and manifestation of your glory. I pray that my words today, Lord God, will be like a sweet-smelling fragrance to you. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord, to have your way in this service. And I pray that somebody gets that confirmation that they were looking for. 
Hey, give your God a round of applause. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I was thinking today, I was thinking this morning, that one of the, I think it must be five, six years when I came before, and I asked my son to minister before I was going to speak. And he was much younger then. And now he's a big man and doing his own things. And I, I sent a um, LinkedIn message just this week to say, when you know that question you ask yourself sometimes of what about what you tell your younger self? And I don't like that question. I'm thinking, what would I tell my younger self? And I put in this message that when I was 23, he's 23 now, what would I tell my 23-year-old self? And I was thinking about the things that I'd achieved in the business world. At that time, I started something called Black Link. I had karate clubs. I was doing many different things. I was thinking about the fact that I'd started my own business. Then I reflected on my son, who himself is about to qualify as an accountant. But he's got a degree. I didn't even have a degree. I'm thinking about the stuff I did in the community. And then he's been in church his whole life. He was a youth Usher, when he was about seven or eight. And then leader of children's department now. And released just this weekend another gospel track. And I'm thinking, what would I tell my 23-year-old self? I would just talk to my son and say, you're doing it, son. You're smashing it. But more than that, more than that, this morning when my wife and I, my wife is with me, there's Judy George, she's the, she don't, I shouldn't mention her when on these platforms because she doesn't like to be taken out, but there she is, Judy George, who is the wife of our household with my three boys. And we were listening to a song and it says, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Now, you can tell already that I ain't the one with the gift of singing. <laughs> but I'm blessed that I can call my son and ask him to do something for us today. Just to get me in the right spirit before I do my service. Does that make sense? So I'm going to ask him to just come and just do one chorus for me. But what he doesn't know, I'm also going to ask him to address you for two minutes. Because I must can turn on a penny and give you a message. So whatever's on your mind, I want you to tell the church this morning. So, but just start the service for me, Lord, whatever. I don't know if the musicians can help him out. Thank you. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Please don't do it without me. And Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Please don't do it without me. And Lord, if you're healing, healing in this season, please don't do it without me. Yes, please don't do it without me. And I said, Lord, if you're delivering, delivering in this season, please don't do it without me. Yes, please don't do it without me. Yes, please don't do it without me. Yes, please don't do it without me. And say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Yes, please don't do it without me. Can we raise a praise on that moment? Can we raise a praise to our God that is willing to do it with us and for us and on our behalf? 
can really begin just to give God a really big praise at this moment and take this opportunity to say, I thank you, God, for showing up in my circumstance, in my situation, and it was activated by an amen or a hallelujah. Or just, I thank you, God, for being in my situation today. Can really begin to give God a praise at this moment, like it's showing up in exactly how you needed him to show up. And I didn't have to pray for healing. I didn't have to pray for deliverance. I didn't have to pray for salvation. I just needed to pray for you to exist in my circumstance. And things beginning to shift right where I was. Things beginning to change right where I was. My perspective changed. My thanksgiving changed. And you began to exist as the healer, as the deliverer, as the savior. Can we raise a praise to God in that moment today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give your God a round of applause. Yes, we lift you up. The next generation. My title today, saints, is The Ten Commandments of Financial Stewardship. The Ten Commandments. My scripture reference. They'll be familiar to you in Matthew 6 and 33. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And in Proverbs 37 and 20, 25 it says, I've been young, I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. May God add the richest blessings to the reading of his holy word. You see, I've been studying recently as our, our pastor said, Carl, I want you to talk to our church about financial stewardship, something, a topic that I've spoken about many times before. And I was looking at a book by Larry Burkitt, and in his book he talks about thousands of scriptures to do with finances, demonstrating why Jesus would talk about this as one of the priorities of what we've got in the Bible. So I wanted to talk to you just about 10 of those today as I give you these simple commandments. But people know what to do, but they don't do what they know. So some of the scriptures I'm going to share with, <coughs> share with you, you know the scriptures already. You know the simple commandments, but are you doing what you know? I want you to have a reminder for some of you. Some of you will be a refresher. For others, you will be a new revelation. But what's been in my spirit, Pastor, is that there's going to be confirmation for somebody today by considering the words that we're going to share. How many of you are in debt in any way? How many are debt-free? How many of you have got your mortgage paid off? How many of you got a credit card? How many of you got a trust fund for your children so that the next generations have got something? How many of you got an emergency fund so that you've got three to six months living expenses? How many of you are saving and have got investments that you can use for the medium term? There's this thing called FIRE. Financial independence, retire early. It's a group of people that say you should aggressively invest, aggressively save, so that you can get your mortgage paid off early. Have you heard about FIRE? It's an organization that you can Google. Those of you who are in debt, we've got something called Christians Against Poverty, where we can come together and look at how we can get rid of those bad debts. Because I'll tell you later on, there's sometimes there's good debt that we can use. So did you know that the average net worth of a household in the UK is something like 280,000 pounds? And that's because of the property that you earn. That's really good. But when I look at the African and African Caribbean community, anybody want to guess what the net worth is? 34,000 pounds. So £280,000 for British society, and in our communities, somewhere between twenty and £50,000, £35,000. That's not good, is it? The average income in the UK is about £35,000. But then there's an ethnicity pay gap. What do I mean by that? 
just because of your background, you get paid 13 to 16% less than your counterparts. So if I was to take that 15% of that 35,000, I would probably get somewhere around 5,000 pounds as the gap. The gap's only there because of your ethnic background. And if I didn't even compound it, I just looked at that gap for the working life that you have. By the end of your working life, you're already down 200,000 pounds. Just say, well, yeah, just say, well. If we could just change that, I can add compound interest to that. I can add what you do with that investment. You see, I'm going to talk to you today about financial stewardship and home ownership is one of the reasons why some other communities are much further advanced than our community. And the white British population, 68% of them own their own home. The Indian community, 74%. The Pakistani community, 58%. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? What about the black Caribbean community? Remember the other, what, was, what was the British community and the Asian community? Up there in the 70s? Us, 40%. Black African community, 20%. Can you see that? If we want to get wealth, then we've got to do something about this home ownership as well. But then we've got this pay gap that we aren't able to even get onto the mortgage cycle. So I'm telling you what the averages are because we need to start to think about what we're going to do. And I want to talk to the young people because I want to encourage you about what you're going to do for the future. So the average debt, not including your mortgage, is £35,000. But guess what again in this theme... I haven't started yet, you know. I'm just getting, some, just getting some facts and figures out there just to lay the context. As I think about it, and I think about the average income, guess who's got the highest credit card debt? Who love to spend? The black Caribbean community. We love to spend. And then we love to spend on credit. Who's got the lowest credit score? The black. Caribbean community. I used to say something, it's a bit sensationalist. I used to say by the time you get to 65, most people are dead or dead broke. I know it's a little bit sensationalist, but can you see where I'm going? If we don't do something now for the next generation that we're speaking about, we haven't got much to plan for them. So I look at it from a positive point of view. I've always tried to be in the top 5% of anything I do. When I was growing up, I said, how can I be the best? How can I achieve excellence? Young people, are you hearing what I'm saying? We want to go for excellence. So when I look at the ultra high net worth individuals in this society, those are the 0.1%. They have something like 30 million pounds of asset. The 0.1%. The high net worth individuals, this is like 1% of the population, they have a million pounds of net assets excluding their home. Young people, just cut these figures. Millionaires with their property have, and they're about 6% of the population, are worth about a million pounds. Less than 1% of the UK population earns more than £200,000 salary. Something like 5% of the UK population gets to that six-figure salary of £100,000. Does that make sense? I'm telling you all of this. I'm an accountant by profession. I studied so that I could qualify and work in the sector that would enable me to earn a six-figure salary at quite a young age. You know you've got people coming out of university, doing their master's degree, and coming out and earning six-figure salaries. And that, that's 5% of the population. So I'm talking to the so many younger people, I'm talking to some of us here, so that we can have aspiration to go to that next level. Does that make sense? 
so that we can turn around some of those statistics that I've got you all sad about when I was talking right at the beginning, you know, about the debt and about the credit. And it seemed like we were lost as a community. But I'm here to tell you today, that's different in the church because seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and everything that you want will be added to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm here to tell you today that it isn't just about money, but the Bible tells me money answer us all things so it's good to talk about we can pray and we can fast and we can tell but James said faith without works is dead and sometimes when people want to eat it's good that we can pray for them but you might want to give them a little food are you hearing what I'm saying so in Ecclesiastes 10 and 19 it says this a feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry but money answereth all things. You see, as an accountant, I'm trained in something called the money measurement concept. We measure things in money so that we can compare one thing to another. Finances are important. If I want to compare one business to another business, I measure it in money and I can tell which one's doing better than the other. We have a prudence concept which says anticipate no profit but provide for all losses we learn that right at the beginning and it becomes a culture of what we do and you'll hear as I start to deliver I said I'm going to do the 10 commandments of financial stewardship so let's start with commandment one we can start the clock now I'm going to start in Proverbs 15 and 29 it says this the Lord is far from the wicked but he hears the prayer of the righteous you see, commandment number one is thou shalt be righteous. Before I get into anything about money, I want you to understand that we've got to be righteous. Does that make sense, saints? A starting point to anything is blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of what? Nor sitteth in the seat of what? But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate both what? Day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the... And whatsoever he doeth shall... You see, when we get into righteousness, we understand that we can turn around some of those things that I spoke to you about before. Because blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. He says, be ye holy because I am holy. And it isn't by my strength, it isn't by my might that we're going to turn some of this around. It's by the spirit of the holy Jesus. You see, I understand that we are as filthy rags, Romans tells me. I understand that we have DNA, in our DNA we have sin. But because of Jesus, as our pastor said today, we have the gift of eternal life and he can take away all of that sin and impute righteousness unto us. And if we want to be able to turn around those circumstances, it's not by my strength, it's not by my might that I can get righteousness. Righteousness comes from above. And he can take away all of the sin that I've been through. Does that make sense? And before we move anywhere in my commandments, thou shalt be righteous. So we've got to make sure we understand where we are in the kingdom before we do anything else with our financial self-defense. Number two, Malachi 3 and 10 is a scripture that we shall be familiar with. And it Number two says, thou shalt tithe. The first three that I want to give you are three key principles. The first one be righteous. The second one be tithe. And it says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. And that there may be food in my house. 
This is about the law. Some people say, you know what? This is the law and, and Jesus came to, so that we don't have to abide by the law. But even before the law, Melchizedek, Abraham tithed to. It's a principle. You see, even before I was in the church, I came into the church um, around the age of 30, somewhere like that. Although I'd grown up going to church because Granny used to take me to church, what we used to call Clapham Church. I used to go to the Methodist church because if I wanted to be in the football team, they said you had to come to church. And I used to go down to the sat there uh, on um, down Trinity Road. We used to go to Gospel Hall as well because that's where our friends were. So although I was in church, I wasn't of the church. Does that make sense? Until I was a big man, so I knew the principles. But even before I became baptized, I knew about universal laws because I studied people in business who used to tithe and they got a benefit from tithing. So I was surprised to find that when I came to church that those same universal principles that I saw business people using, we weren't using in the church. So forget the law, forget where you are coming from. It's a universal law, you know, like gravity. What goes up must come down. Tithing is just like that. It's a universal law. But when we add the scripture to it, which says, prove me now in this, that you will not open the windows of heaven. I said, geez, I can get that as well. It made it more easy for me to tithe. I believe my tithe protects me. I don't think your tithe will get anything back, but it protects the assets. And it's about in your storehouse. We tithe into the storehouse that we're there. And we leave the storehouse to then do what the great commission is, which is to feed the poor, the lonely, and the destitute, and to go out into the community. As I've heard you talking about today, you leave the church to do that, and you just bring your tithe into the storehouse. Can I get an amen, saints? Number three, thou shalt give. Luke 6.38 Everybody knows this. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over into your bosom. We know that, don't we? And for the same measure with which you give or you use, it will be measured back to you. You see, if the tithe is to protect... In my opinion, the offering is to increase. So the tithe, I put to one side and I make sure that I've done that. And it's the same for everybody, isn't it? 10% of 100 is 10%. 10% of 1,000 is 10%. It's the same and equal for everybody. But the offering is the thing that we can use to see multiplication. Because it says, give and it shall be Good measure, press down, shake it together, and to the amount that you give will be given back to you. You see, I, and it's all relative, I have been around some very successful, asset-rich people over my career. Because I work in business, I've helped people to look after their businesses. I've helped people who are in that top 1%, and some even in that 0.1%. So I'm exposed to people who've got many, many assets. I haven't had that level of assets. But lots of people in the community would look at me and say, I would aspire to be as wealthy as Carl. But it's all relative, isn't it? Because when I'm looking at these people, they've got wealth even beyond my imagination. But one thing I've always had that is comparable to all of those people who were asset rich throughout my whole life is the flow of finances. My God has been able, I've worked for myself since the age of 23. I've been able to feed my family, feed my community, feed the things that I'm doing my whole life. And even when I didn't have assets there, there was always an abundance and an overflow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And incredibly, the more that I would give, the more would come back to me. 
I don't know if you're getting this. You see, when you're in the kingdom and you get your righteousness right, even if at the time you haven't got the assets, my God will always supply my needs. And I've seen that. The scripture said I was young and I was old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging. You know, after all of those years, and I have had hard times, but he's always provided. I don't know if I could get an amen for that. The first three principles in my commandments are, I want you to make sure you understand that don't get this twisted. I'm going to tell you about some practical principles about money, but righteousness is right there at the top and seeking the kingdom. I don't want you to get it twisted, but these disciplines of making sure we do our tithe and we do our offering, and it's just not financially, are just the basics before we can move to the next level. Does that make sense? Number four, it says this. Luke 16 and 10, my commandment is spend less than you earn. Thou shalt spend less than you earn. It says, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is in unjust in what is least is also unjust in much. I told you that I am an accountant by profession. I told you that I used to run a business helping people with their accounts. And I remember having a client once who told me they're going to do this right to buy, to buy back his mother's property. He was a barber, a mobile barber, and he didn't earn that much money. At the time, I think it was, I don't know, 20 or 30,000 pounds per year. That's his business. At the same time, I've got clients who got turnover sales of a million pounds a year. 500,000 pounds a year. Do you get the context? He's a very small client. And he said to me, right, I want to buy this property. I need 50,000 pounds or whatever it was at the time deposit or 35,000 pounds to do this right to buy. And I'm going to go for it. And let's say his name is John. It wasn't John, but let's just say his name. I said, John, how are you going to do that? Because you only earn 30,000 pounds a year. And he said, no, no, I can do it. I've saved it up. I said, you saved it up. How did you do that? Guess what he said? A secret. What do you think the secret was? I spend less than I earn. So even in his little 30,000 pounds, every single year he used to save his five or his 6,000 pounds and live on less than he earned. I've got clients who had a million pounds of turnover. And guess how much they were able to save? Minus 100,000 pounds. In fact, they didn't have any saving. They would have debt. Do you get the principle that I'm trying to get you to understand? You see, if we are faithful in the little bits, we're going to be faithful in the bigger bits. Don't think that I've got to get that abundance now until you've sorted out how you deal with the small amounts of money. No matter how small it is, if we spend less than we earn. I have a saying which says, sales is vanity, profit is sanity, and cash is reality. I don't care how much your salary is. Because if you're on £50,000 and you're spending £60,000, what good is that? If you're on £20,000 and you're saving £10,000, can you see, it isn't the sales figure in your business, but it's the profit figure that's important. And then at the end of it, what cash have you got? Cash is reality. I don't know if anybody's catching this. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself very recently... And this is where the spiritual nature comes in sometimes when God speaks to you about spending less than you earn and being diligent with your money. That in, and I haven't, got several, I haven't got a property portfolio or anything like that, but we have a few properties. And in one of the properties the other day, we found out that, that under the cellar, the, the, um, it was leaking. The, 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 it, there was a blockage in the drainage. And I had to get my son to go out and find out what was going on and speak to the water authority and so on. At the same time, and it would be the weekend when my wife's away, and you, you wouldn't believe this, but anything to do with the home in terms of the house and maintenance and so on, it's normally the man in it. 
but he's in my ass. My, my, my wife is the one who knows where everything is. So the weekend she's away, there's some leak going on in the kitchen area that's coming from upstairs. So my, I had to go and try and sort out what's going on. Anyway, we found out what it was, but there was a leak upstairs coming down. And as I was looking outside, I saw another pipe coming out of the kitchen that was just flushing water. And that must have been going on for months, but we just never noticed it. And then in another property that we've got, the tenant below was complaining to the leaseholder that there's a leak coming from upstairs, which was our flat. I'm saying all this to say, Pastor, that I'm a spiritual guy. And when God's talking to me, I need to listen. You see, in the one property, there's something about a blockage. In another one, there's something about a leak. In another one, there's something about flow. In another one, there's, like a, there's somebody threatening because they're saying that it was our property leaking into theirs. And I don't know if it was. And I took all of this to say, Carl, what? Let's take a look at your finances. Let's try and look at where there's a blockage. Let's try and look at where there's some leaks. Let's try and look at where you're going to be attacked. Can you hear what I'm saying, saints? Because we've got to make sure that with the stewardship of the money I've got, I've got to spend less than I earn. I don't know if somebody's catching this. Number five, thou shalt not be hasty. Thou shalt not be hasty. Proverbs 20 and 21 says this, an inheritance gained hastily at the beginning will not be blessed at the end. Anybody understand when I talk about a get-rich-quick scheme? Anybody heard about them? You see, recently people have been talking about investing in Bitcoin and so on. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do this. I remember when I was young, I used to invest in penny shares, and we invested a lot of money in it, and then it was going up and making money. Then all of a sudden, all the investments that we made, we lost them because it was very short term. Does that make sense? I remember talking to two of my three boys, and they were telling me about this Bitcoin phenomena and how much money they're going to put in. And I was reminding them, particularly my youngest one, because his friend was making a lot of money, saying to him, you know what? I remember this when I was younger. And although the money goes like this, it can drop very quickly. And my investment in the thing that they told me about was about £1,000. But they also did £1,000. And they're young. So my £1,000 as a proportion of my income is a lot different to the £1,000 of their income. Does that make sense? You know how much that £1,000 is worth now? Something like 123 pounds. I checked it the other day. I went to my phone and looked at it. The thousand pounds gone to 123 pounds. At one stage, it was worth 2,000 or 3,000 because it did this. What I'm saying is, those things that are too good to be true are too good to be true. Forget about the get rich quick schemes and think about the get rich slow schemes. I'm telling you to put money into a pension. I'm telling you to get your ISA sorted out first, which is a tax-free way of investing in the stock market. So you get your ISA allowance to the maximum, and you could become a millionaire just by maxing your ISA allowance for the next 10, 15 years. You become a millionaire just by doing that. Nothing complicated. Does that make sense? You've got to have an emergency fund first, which I'll share with you in a minute, which is three to six months of your living expenses, and then put some money away into your pension and take your time to get rich. Get rich slow is what I'm saying. And finally, think about multiple streams of income. We haven't got time to cover that today, but that's another way of making sure that we get the income, we compound it, and we have it from a number of sources. Number six, it says, thou shalt not have slack hands. Proverbs 10 verse 4. He who has slack hands becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. There's a book by Thomas J. Stanley called The Millionaire Next Door. And he talks about the perception of a millionaire based on what a millionaire actually is. And the perception of the millionaire has got a nice car, he lives in a nice home, and he dresses in nice clothes. 
has a Mont Blanc pen, has designer shoes and all those types of things. And then you find the real millionaire who has an old car that they haven't got any finance on, a house in an area that they can have a bigger house in a nice area, but they haven't got as big a mortgage. And I used to be the guy who would go to the gym and check my gym membership and say to them, what's the most expensive one? Because I'm the millionaire in my mindset. But the real millionaire would go to their local community center or their local gym and they haven't got this expensive gym membership. Back in the day, I'm sure I used to spend 70, 80 pounds per month just so that I could have an extra gown and towels when I'm going to the gym. Does that make sense? The perception of the millionaire wasn't the real millionaire. You see, I would go to the shop, I disrespected money, I didn't have the appreciation of money, and I'd say, how much does that cost? And if it wasn't expensive enough, I'd say, no, that can't be for me. Can you see how your mind gets warped because you don't understand? But the real millionaire will have a bar and look for a bargain and make sure they get it at the right price. Those slack hands where you haven't got an emergency fund. Those slack hands where you don't save, invest and tithe so that you live on seven-tenths of what you earn will ensure that you stay in poverty. Pay yourself first by putting money away. And then live on seven-tenths of what you earn. Number seven, we're nearly there. Thou shalt not borrow. Proverbs 22 and 7, it says this. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. And there is a caveat, because sometimes, as it says, you can have good debt. You can have debt that other people are paying for. So you take out a mortgage on a property and then you use that money to rent it out and the tenants are paying for it so you're able to earn some income. So I call that good debt. Does that make sense? But I would suggest to you that apart from your home and perhaps your car, because I know in the society we are in now, my son and I were debating on this, whether we should buy a car cash now or whether we should take out a lease. But apart from your car and your home, I would suggest you shouldn't have any other debt. Because why? The borrower is servant to the lender. And definitely not credit card debt. Because the interest that you're paying means that it's a futility bill. Do you know what a futility bill is? It lasts forever. <laughs> You'll be paying it for the rest of your life. Particularly if you pay the minimum amount. I'm saying to you, thou shalt not borrow. Number eight, Proverbs 20 and 13 says, do not love sleep lest you come to poverty. Thou shalt not love sleep. Now, sleep is important. Sleep is important so that we get the right rest and relaxation. But I don't want you to sleep your way into poverty because faith without works is dead. So how many of you understand that you know those people who got rich quick you think was doing years and years and years of work and that at the end of it, that's when you saw the benefit. You saw it right at the end, but you don't know about the 10, 15 years, the hard work, the discipline, the things that they were doing. And now you're saying to them, wow, look how successful they are. You don't know about the decades of work that they've done. I'm saying to you that don't love sleep. Find out what your gift is. Find out what you love to do. Find out what can pay you and use that to make sure that you are working towards where you need to be. Number nine. 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. We know this one. Thou shalt not love money. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. You know, when we look at divorce, up there at the top, finance is one of the reasons why we see divorce. When we look at death and we look at families breaking up, you know what we see a lot of the time? There's something to do with greed and finance that breaks us up. 
Some people are even wicked to themselves when they hoard money. They can't even spend it because they're scared of what's going to happen. And we know about parables about the rich man. I'm saying to you that the love of money is going to take you away from getting money. It's a spirit that we want to make sure that we break. I preached a, I preached a message one time just on this one particular area because my favorite scripture says, The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow or he adds no toil to it. You see, if you can get the right spirit, the Lord will bless you. And if you're trying to work too hard, if you're trying to work and things are not working for you, it's probably a sign that you shouldn't have been doing it. The blessings of the Lord will make a fridge. Let me conclude with our last one. Proverbs 13 and 22 says this. Thou shall create legacy. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. Mary McLeod Bethune said this. She was a civil rights leader back in the 1900s. Mary McLeod says that we should be heirs and custodians of a great legacy. She was talking about our history and our culture. So we've got a requirement to be heirs and custodians of that culture. How many of us, I said at the beginning, have thought about what we're going to leave for our children? You know, because I hang around sometimes, these people who are in the 0.1 and the 1%, they talk about the trust funds that they've got for their children. So the children start at a different level to our community because they've already got something that was put in place. So they don't have to start from where we start from. They start from a different standpoint. Does that make sense? And what are we doing to think about our children's children? How are we thinking about how we think put things into trust? Why can't our children start to break those statistics that I told you about right at the beginning? And I know all of us aren't at those aspirational levels, but I'm here to tell you today that I come from the same community that we come from. I come from the same background, and I know that we're not all the same, but the younger generations, they've got an ability to do more than I could have ever done, and in a quicker time. And if you're doing it in the kingdom, God knows what else we can achieve. So I'm saying to you now that we've got to make sure that we understand how we leave a legacy. And again, again, got time today, but property is probably going to have something to do with, as I look at all the other communities around the world, is something to do with how we store up wealth for the next generation. Even if it's just the discipline of having that mortgage every single year and not spending it on something else. Does that make sense? So I'll conclude with this, Pastor. How many of you want to be a blessing to the kingdom to be able to bless your church your community, or the next generation. Just put your hand up. How many of you want to transform your financial future today so that you're ready for what God's got in store for you? You can put your hand up. I gave you three principles today. I said to you, we're first going to make sure we look at our righteousness, our tithing and our offering. I said to you, we've got to spend less than we earn. We've got to make sure that we plan for the future, have a budget, and make sure we avoid bad credit. And then I started to talk about what you do about yourself. How you make money serve you rather than you serve money. And think about legacy. And pastor, when you asked me to preach about this, you know what? I was going to say to you, I don't preach about finance anymore, you know. But I've, got, I've got so many things I can talk about. And I was going to give you a call or text back and say, let me talk about something else. But God rebuked me and said, you know what? And I was having conversations with myself. He said, no, this word is for this church and someone here at this time. There's somebody here today who needs to hear. I had to go back through my notes. Go back, because I am an accountant. I have studied. But I sold that business some 15 years ago. And I specialize in corporate governance now. 
As I look to the future, about two years ago, um, I, you, you have in the business world, the biggest accountancy firm in the world is called PwC. I'm a subject matter expert for PwC, and what that means is they white label some of my intellectual property. They use my information around the world and call it their own. We call that white labeling. And they pay me, and I'm not boasting here, but they'll put me on a plane, take me all around the world, and I speak to people like I'm speaking now, and they give me lots of money for it. Isn't that good? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to Trinidad in a couple of weeks' time. I don't, I don't, 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 don't hate. <laughs> I was in Dubai a few weeks ago, don't hate. And I'm saying this to say that when I developed this information, when I developed the principles, I'm reminded all the time what God is telling me to do in my life. I'm reminded to say to you that you can do similar. I'm reminded to say to you that if I'm a subject matter expert, it means that I focused on myself. I got the ability to deliver by the knowledge and the hard work I've done for the last couple of decades. And just two years ago, I sold that business to another top firm. It's called RSM. We're the sixth largest in the world. And they took me on board to head up corporate governance nationally for the organization. And we develop a team of people. So I'm in another season of my life. I'm not retired as such, but I've retired for that season of my business. I took some money from them because I've sold my business a couple of times now. And now I'm in a different season. Does that make sense? We can all have a strategy of what we need to do. And I'm saying that to encourage, I'm looking at the young people. Because it was that I was at that age that I had those thoughts of what I wanted to do. I'm saying to you today that there's a reminder here that we can seek the kingdom and his righteousness and everything will be added to you. So if it means that, you know what, I've got to cut up that credit card. If it means that I've got to start to get myself out of debt and the average that most people within a couple of years, if you get disciplined, you probably can get yourself out of it. Look at Christians Against Poverty. If it means that I've got to spend less than I earn, you know those bargains that you think, I want that bargain because I'll use my emergency fund and that thing that was a thousand pounds is now 700 pounds so I can take my bargain money because I've saved 300 pounds, I'll take it back my emergency fund. No, you don't. Emergency fund is for emergency. Leave the bargain where it is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If it means we've got to change all of these disciplines, today is the day for us to think about our financial stewardship. And then we can see abundance in my house. And then in this church. And then in our community. And we can change those statistics that I shared with you at the beginning that are frightening about our community. I conclude there, Bishop. Thank you very much. Just stay here, stay here. Wow. You can do far better than you've just done. You, what you've heard. Amen. Carl, you're a giant. Thank you, sir. And we thank God for you and for the gifting that you are to the church and to our community. I want you to pray for us. Amen. He's an apostle in business. That's what he is. And he has equipped us. He's just scratched the surface, in fact. Let me ask you a question. So, what would be your advice if some of our people need to get their debt sorted? I know you mentioned poverty, Christians Against Poverty. What practically can they start to do immediately? Yeah, one of the things I would definitely suggest is that you part to pull together a budget. Look at where... I can look at... You don't have checkbooks anymore, but I can look at your spending and tell a lot about your life. I can tell about the things that you're doing. 
So I would get a budget. I start to write down everything that you're spending. And then start to think about where we need to make those cuts. There may be some difficult decisions. There may be things that we understand that we're paying lots of interest and we want to get out of that credit and all of those credit cards, get them reduced. And Christians Against Poverty, it's just an organization that helps people who are in debt and it helps them to start to think about it, face up to it, and then make a plan. That's what I'm saying. Once we've done that, we can start to look practically at the other things. But it's about a mindset. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And if you can transform your thinking today, then you're on the right journey to make sure you're going to get to the destination that you want to get to. Amen. Fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let's all stand. We can, I, I want you to, to pray in particular for the young people. So young people don't go away. But I want you to pray for the church. In fact, young people, will you come forward, please? I want, you to, I want us to pray for you. Because I do know that there are young people already in business. TikTok. Is that what you, how you call it? And they're earning already on TikTok. All right? So they've got a whole world there that they need to really go for. If you're a young person under, the, under what age? Age under 30. Under 30. Come, come, up, come along here. Come along here. We may need to stand up here. Yes. Pray for the church. And then please pray for the young people. Face me, young people, please. If you face me. And we're going to put our hands to them in a moment. But I just want to tell you something, that I ran a meeting recently. I have a leaders meeting with black chairs, owners, non-executives, senior people in the city. And I asked some of the young people that are doing well in business to come and speak to us. And I'm saying this to you so that you can be inspired. There was a young man from Aston. He went to Aston Manor. And he was talking about his property business. And he was talking about deals that are, I kept the figure, 300 to 500 million pounds. Remember I said about the 0.1%? He went Aston Manor. He's in, from our community. There's another young man there who employs 150 people and has 15 million pounds turnover. A young African girl who does stuff with hair and the internet and IT, and she's got a five million pound business. These are people in our community. This is what I want you to insp be inspired to do. Does that make sense? And we're going to do something together. We're going to make a declaration that I've been doing for years. It says, thank you, Lord, for another day so that I can improve in every way. Every day and in every way, I'm getting better and better. I'm growing richer and richer, exceptional in every area of my life. And financial success is flowing to me easily and effortlessly. We're going to declare that together because you're going to speak to yourself, Pastor. I'm, not, I'm going to pray for you, but you're going to have to pray for yourself. You're going to have to speak into existence the things that are not as though they are. You're going to have to see the abundance and overflow come into your life by the things that you say consistently. Can I get an amen? So we're going to do this together just after I pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the heart of your pastor who asked me to come here to give you a word for somebody who's got a confirmation today. We're just moving in the right season, Lord God, because we know that you want to make a transformation in the kingdom. It's not a coincidence that we're going into our conferences and our deliverance training to see breakthrough and transformation coming up in a couple of weeks' time. But we've got to be prepared, Lord God. We've got to make sure that we're in a position of righteousness so that as we speak truth, do justice, and walk in the way of righteousness, we shall be ready. 
So right now, Lord God, as we pray for the congregation and this church, I come against every plan of the enemy. I come against every negative evil word. I come against every distraction, Lord God. And I declare that the windows of heaven, open heaven, will be on this church, on every individual that is represented here today in the name of Jesus. And right now, Lord God, we're going to just declare collectively. And you will say with me, thank you, Lord, for another day. Come on, say it again. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Now say it like you mean it. Sometimes when you hear a word, I am the kind of person who I'm catching it and I'm taking it for myself. I don't care who's next to me and what they're hearing, but I know I say to myself, this was a word for me. And guess what? You can be right next to somebody who hears the same thing, but they didn't catch it. I'm asking you today, when you're speaking, say, this word was for me, and I want you to catch it. So this time when you say it, you're going to say it as though you caught the Spirit. Just say, thank you, Lord, for another day. So I can improve in every way. Every day and in every way, I'm getting better and better. I'm getting richer and richer. Better and better. Richer and richer. Stronger and stronger in every single area of my life. And God's favor is flowing to me easily and effortlessly give you God a round of applause. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together and give praise to the Lord. Thank you, young people. You can go back to your seat. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands with me as we pronounce the benediction. When we pronounce the benediction, we're saying, thank you, God. Yeah. Father, we thank you for what we have heard today. However difficult, challenging, we thank you. Thank you for the impartation from your servant. The understanding which has come to us concerning money and finances. And may you help us to take note and take action in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 God bless you. Go out and carry the blessing of God with you wherever you go today. God bless you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise.